So it is no secret that astrophotography is very expensive. Yep. Uh, but sometimes you can buy things that will make your life much easier without breaking the bank. Right. And over the last six years that we've been doing astrophotography, we've talked with a lot of people, we've discovered things ourselves, and found some of the cheapest great items that will make your life easier as an astrophotographer. So we wanted to share those with you today. So in this video, we're going to go over five accessories that will make your life much easier without breaking the bank. So it's going to go from a few cents to a maximum of 30 bucks. Let's get to it. All right, number one, uh, does your telescope look like a spaghetti monster with all the cables? So uh, for us, it was the case for about three or four years until we got uh, those cable management sleeves. So those are very, very, very useful because you can have like a bunch of cables in just one sleeve. So you can pretty much turn like uh, three or four cables into just one cord, which is very, very great. And not only does it make your scope much cleaner, it also reduces the chances of your uh, cables getting stuck when slowing around, especially when slowing, uh, for example, for major flip. So uh, we use these cable management sleeves as well as those straps here. So we have uh, straps on each side to make the sleeves uh, tighter. And we also use those straps um, like on the side of the telescope to kind of uh, stick on those cables. Right, it's telescope. like a Velcro um, string. Yeah. And it's double-sided, so it sticks to itself. It's very, very useful. So, 10 out of 10 recommend those cable sleeves. The next thing! Okay, so the next thing is a spacer, which is like very tiny. I don't even know if you can see it. <laughs> but this is really useful. Actually, you're going to need it to achieve the perfect back focus. So what happens is then you put your camera on and you just need that little bit of space, like millimeters of space. So you'll need one of these spacer rings to help you achieve that perfect back focus. However, there are very expensive options. Uh, there are metal um, spacers, which kind of are really expensive for just one. It's like 15 bucks and that's kind of outrageous. This, however, is 3D printed and it's plastic um, and you can probably get like 15 of these for like 12 bucks which is like very affordable and they come in different sizes so that's what we did. We ordered uh, a pack of you know spacer rings of different sizes and it's probably the best solution for you know making sure that everything's good to go. Yeah it's like a few cents. This is a few cents per ring whereas a, a middle ring is like one ring for like 14 bucks which is insane. And it's ridiculous. So be sure that when you're looking for spacers for your camera, you get the ones that are 3D printed and plastic rather than the metallic ones. Okay, number three is going to be a tripod suppression, no, tripod vibration suppression pads. So we actually don't have any. Uh, we're hoping to go to our friend Jorge's house and, and show you guys what they look like. But you can just attach a picture somewhere here. <laughs> so these pads are pretty uh, affordable, even though they're the most expensive thing in this list. Uh, I think it's around 29 bucks. So uh, these pads are useful if you want your tripod to be uh, more stable when it comes to vibrations. Steady, firm. Or, uh, if you remember a video we made uh, a few years ago, I think we published it last year, uh, we went to our first bottle one zone on my birthday weekend and we got very, very depressed all weekend because we didn't know it, but our mount sunk into the ground there. So if we had those pads, we would have used them and the mount would have been completely fine all night. So uh, we'd have, we would have had a, a much better memory of that weekend if we had those pads. So these ones are very, very useful if you often image either in the sand or in the mud, even in the snow, or if you have like a porch, for example, and you keep walking around, or maybe you have like two big dogs that keep walking around. So these pads will help suppress any vibration uh, coming from uh, the area. And even like a, a busy road, for example, if you live next to a freeway, uh, it might not know it, but vibration. it vibrates, yeah. So there is only one catch though. Uh, these vibration pads, uh, we ha we'll have a link somewhere or uh, a video attached here where I think his name is James Lamb. He explains that the vibration pads are, are good, but they kind of cancel out 
the stiffness of the tripod, which means if you have any wind, then this pad will make it actually worse. So uh, those pads are not good for a windy day. They're only good for like a, a very smooth ground or vibrations. Right. So uh, yeah, we would consider buying those pads if you, if you want to. Um, just make sure you don't use them if it's windy. Number four, okay. And the fourth thing that we wanted to talk about is a lights panel, which looks like this, or actually it could look like anything really. This is, happens to be a, a tracing pad for artists, so if you have one of these, good. But whatever you use, it helps you take flat frames at the end of the night when you're done imaging. And it's very useful, you know, obviously you turn every, the telescope all the way up, you just set this on top, let it do its thing. Uh, this is I think about 23 or 24 bucks. Uh, the reason why it's in this video is because most flat panel, like the actual flat panel, are like 500 bucks. Yeah. So attach your telescope and they're like electronic and stuff, like they automatically flap, flip, flop, whatever, <laughs> whenever you need them to. But you don't actually need to pay 500 bucks for a flat panel. Nope. Just get a sketcher, whatever it's called. Yeah, just get like this tracing pad. Yeah, it's it, more than it, enough. It totally works. It, it does the job. I think you should only spend that much money, like 500 bucks on a electronic one, if you have like a permanent setup, that's it. Uh, if you don't, if you're like us, just buy uh, this thing. Yeah, it's you know, it, it travels with us. Very, it's very easy to carry. And too. light is light. I mean, it's, it's white light. It's just as good as a, a expensive one. Yeah, so light panel number four. Okay. And number five, uh, let's end up with this. Um, have you ever had a... Have you ever had a... Have you ever, I had a joke coming have, have, you, have you ever... <laughs> <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever had... Wait, no. <laughs> have you ever had a adapter that is stuck to like a camera or something else mm. and you had to ask your daddy to do something for you? <laughs> so, uh, me, yes, but I couldn't ask my daddy because he's like 5,000 miles away. So I, I had no choice. I can't ask my dad either. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I had no choice but to find a different way to actually unstuck, so loosen uh, two adapters together. And the first time I tried, I actually took a picture of my hand, uh, but I, for, I don't know where the picture is, I couldn't post it here. Uh, it's on Instagram somewhere. So I took a picture of my hand because I was trying to so loosen uh, two adapters together, like two ZW adapters, and my hand like was, my skin was like completely ripped all here. It was pretty painful. Horrible. Because after like a full night or like a, a full very very cold night or maybe like a, a full month has passed, sometimes your adapters are gonna get stuck forever and there's almost no way to remove them. So unless you buy this, which I think between 10 and 20 bucks, uh, this is called a strap wrench. And so what you do with this is you can actually put the adapter here and tighten it. I'm gonna break your hand. Ah! And then you do this and in just two seconds, your adapter will come off. Right, and another thing here with this strap is that it is rubber, yeah. so if you can't see that, it is made of rubber, so it's gonna very, it's gonna hold onto it, it's gonna grab onto it and yank it out. This is mostly used by either like plumbers, um, for like sink, faucets, whatever. Pipes. Uh, yeah, pipes. Also by mechanics for like old filters, and also by like grandmas for like their drawers, you know? Oh yeah. So uh, <laughs> this is now, Going so to it's be, a multi-use tool. And it's now going to be used by more astrophotographers for their adapters. Absolutely. Yep. That Never have fine. to hurt your hands ever again. So hopefully one of those items we just talked about helps you out in your astrophotography journey. And maybe you'll think about us the next time you use it. So if you guys have any idea for a, a different uh, cheap accessory, let us know. Maybe we'll do a part two if you have enough. And then, uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty uh, interesting video. So yeah, you always want to work smarter, not harder. And we did that for way too many years. So. And we have a, a text uh, blog post on uh, this subject online. Yeah, so if check you it need out. more it's details. Below. So we'll see you guys next time and keep us guys. Nice.